I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. On Tuesday, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer spoke confidently about bipartisan talks for gun control reform. Republican and Democratic senators are currently looking to find common ground on firearm reforms following a spate of recent mass shootings, including the horrific Uvalde Elementary School massacre. Schumer spoke about ongoing talks with Republicans while signaling that no matter what legislation may be arrived upon, Democrats will continue thereafter to push for reforms. Let's listen in to the New York Democrat. Mr. President. The majority leader, we're not. Mr. President, as the Senate's June work period begins, the American people have one question front of mind. After years and decades of gridlock, will the Senate do something about our nation's gun violence epidemic? Democrats are ready to take action, and soon every single member of this chamber is going to have to answer that question. Today is June 7, 2022. It is the 158th day of the year. Already, already, this year we have had over 250 mass shootings. Over 250. That's more than one a day. Two weeks ago, we saw the worst school shooting in America since the tragedy at Sandy Hook. An 18-year-old boy bought two assault rifles for his birthday and gunned down 19 children in Uvalde, Texas. Nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds. You see the pictures of the kids with their sweatshirts, with their awards, with their trophies. Every parent has seen pictures of children that age. And to know that they are no longer, that they were wiped out, that they were brutally murdered, breaks your heart. Just sends shivers down your spine. And a few hours later, these parents will never see their child. A few hours after it happened, parents were realized and told they would never see their children again. Ten days before that, 11 more people were gunned down while grocery shopping in Buffalo simply because of the color of their skin. I still can't get out of my mind the three-year-old I met when I visited Buffalo who lost his dad because his dad make, made a quick stop to the top supermarket to get his son a birthday cake. It was his son's birthday never see his dad again, living with that his whole life, that his dad was killed going to get him a birthday cake. And for every tragedy that traumatizes the nation's collective psyche, there are countless others that take place outside the national spotlight. They happen every single day in homes and communities in every part of this country, across every neighborhood, every school, every small town, every large city. Americans of all persuasions are wondering the same thing. When is it going to be enough? When will Congress find the will to act? One party has that will, and soon will determine whether the other side on the aisle will join. That is the challenge that faces this chamber as we begin this work period. Before Memorial Day, I make clear that the Senate will vote on gun safety legislation in the near future. To, to that end, a handful of my Democratic colleagues, led by Senator Murphy and including the great work of Senators Blumenthal, Sinema, Manchin, Coons, Heinrich, and others, have been holding extended and sub substantive talks with Republicans to see what can pass this chamber that will meaningfully address our nation's gun violence epidemic. I'm encouraging my Democratic colleagues to keep talking to see if Republicans will work with us to come up with something that will make a meaningful change in the lives of the American people and help stop gun violence. There's virtual unanimity among Senate Democrats that getting something passed through this chamber is worth pursuing if it will make a tangible difference in pre preventing gun violence. We know we're not going to get everything we want. We know that the push for even more meaningful gun safety will continue after this debate but making real progress is very important. Senator Murphy has asked for some space to have the bipartisan talks continue, and I have given him that space. I look forward to discussing the status of those talks with my colleagues today. We owe it to American parents. We owe it to American kids. We owe it to every single neighborhood, every single community, every single household that has been ripped apart by gun violence. This is a tough fight. Nevertheless, we have a moral obligation to do everything conceivable 
to break the cycle of violence. In the wake of the tragedies in Uvalde and Buffalo, we have a chance to tell the American people that this time their anguish will not fall on deaf ears. We have a chance to tell them we hear them, that we too are angry, and we are going to do everything we can to make some real progress in the Senate, difficult as that is. But it's only going to happen if both sides keep working. Only with that will hope for a compromise translate into real, concrete legislation. We know it's a difficult hurdle to overcome, but nevertheless, we must do everything we can to try and succeed. Now on the PACT Act, Mr. President, later this morning, the Senate will take the first vote to advance one of the most important veteran health care bills that this chamber has considered in decades. Memorial Day was a little over a week ago, the day our nation honors our war dead and rededicates itself to caring for those who've sacrificed everything to protect our country. Our veterans deserve endless thanks, not just through words, but through action. Today, Toxic chemical exposure is one of the most devastating health problems impacting our nation's veterans. Since 2001, as many as three and a half million service members, three and a half million, have been exposed to toxic smoke, including toxic burn pits and Agent Orange. Sadly, many of them are unable to get the care they need because of outdated rules within the Veterans Administration that determine eligibility for benefits. This is a long overdue for a change. It's something I've been advocating for years. And today I'm thrilled that the Senate will vote to begin consideration of the Honoring Our PACT Act, which my colleagues, Senator Tester and Senator Moran, have done a great job putting together. Every single one of us in this chamber has heard from a military service member who has struggled to afford quality health care. And this is one of the best steps the Senate can take to improve the lives of those who've given their all for our country. The Honoring Our PACT Act would be one of the largest expansions in health care benefits in VA history. And it would make sure that no military service member exposed to toxic chemicals has to endure the indignity of carrying the burden of sickness and treatment alone. I expect today's vote will yield strong bipartisan support. And once there's, we're on this bill, because today is just a motion to proceed, not passage of the bill yet, there is no reason we can't pass it quickly and without needless distraction. Once again, I want to thank Senators Tester and Moran for their leadership on this issue. This issue has been important to me. I've encouraged them, and they have worked so well together adroitly so that this bill can pass. I want to thank every single VSO that has advocated for, for change. And I want to thank prominent voices like John Stewart and John Field, who I just met in my office, who have fiercely advocated for our veterans. We're moving forward today on this bill, and it's hope, my hope, we can reach final passage very quickly. I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum.